constructed over the Kingsbury Run Valley, the site of the Cleveland Torso Murders and racial inequality. This is the story of the Sideway Bridge. The Sidaway Bridge was constructed in 1909 to connect two neighborhoods separated by a valley known as Kingsbury Run. In 1930, the original bridge was replaced with a new suspension bridge. Shortly after this, a string of murders would begin in the Kingsbury Run Valley, known today as the Cleveland Torso Murders. In the 1930s, the Kingsbury Run Valley had gained the nickname Hobo Jungle. Due to the Great Depression, many people were both out of work and out of homes. The valley would become a shanty town, full of people desperately trying to survive in Cleveland's brutal winters. On a chilly day in September of 1934, The lower half of a woman's torso, with her thighs still attached, but cut off at the knees, would wash ashore on Lake Erie. This would be victim zero, as she would not be included in the Cleveland Torso murders until two years after they had officially begun. This Jane Doe would become known as the Lady of the Lake, and her body which was covered in a type of chemical preservatives is what would link her to the other victims. One year later, in September of 1935, two teenage boys would discover the first official victim of the murders, a man who was decapitated. His body was completely naked, save for a single pair of socks. He was Edward Andrasi, a 28-year-old man. A few months later in January of 1936, the next victim would be found. A decapitated woman wrapped in newspaper was found just outside of the Hart factory. The woman was Flores Palillo, a waitress who worked near the edge of Warring Third, a place that Edward Andrasi frequented. In June, July, and September of 1936, three more bodies would be found. The media began dubbing the killer the Mad Butcher of Kingsbury Run. The killings would continue into 1937. In February of 1937, a decapitated woman would wash ashore in Lake Erie. Unlike the other murders, this woman appeared to have died before she was decapitated, rather than decapitation being the cause of death. In June of 1937, 
another body would be found, this time a 40-year-old woman. Another would be found in July of 1937 by a National Guardsman. The National Guard had been called in to quell unrest that was being caused by a labor dispute. On August 16th of 1938, another body would be found. At this point, the public and the police were getting restless, desperately trying to find answers. Elliot Ness, a famous prohibition agent who went after Al Capone, was hired by Cleveland's mayor to become its new safety director during the 1930s. He would lead 35 police officers in a raid on the shantytown in Kingsbury Run Valley. The raiders worked their way through the shantytown, gathering up men and pulling them away from their homes. They went through every shack and gathered as much information as they possibly could, hopefully finding a lead on the murderer. With the help of the fire department, they would begin setting fire to the so-called hobo jungle. Many of the people who called this small shantytown their home looked upon in horror as all their belongings turned to ash. The public would heavily criticize Elliot Ness and the police force for these actions. Although extreme, the murders appeared to have stopped after the raid. In July of 1939, a 52-year-old man named Frank Dolezal, who was a bohemian bricklayer, was arrested on suspicion of the murder of Florence Polillo. His confession was mostly incoherent ramblings, with a few precise details on the case thrown in, which led many to believe that his confession was not genuine. Shortly after this, he was found dead in his cell, as he had hanged himself. During the autopsy, it was found that he had three broken ribs, all of which were sustained while he was in the sheriff's custody. Nobody believes he was the actual killer. To this day, the murders are unsolved. This wouldn't be the end of the tragic history of the Sidaway Bridge, however, as more terrible things were yet to come. So right next to this housing development here is the bridge. As you can see, it looks really, really freaking cool. Like, look how cool that is. We're traversing down into the valley, get a good view of the bridge. So this area is right at the bottom of the bridge, right in the valley. You can see the bridge right here, and then Here's the other side where we came from. Incredible. Really incredible. Throughout the 20th century, the population of Cleveland was changing rapidly. Although most of its residents comprised of European immigrants, by the 1960s, 250,000 denizens of Cleveland were black. By the early 1960s, the suburb on the north side of Sidaway had become predominantly black. Children who lived on the north side of the bridge would use it to go to elementary school in Jackowo. On July 18th of 1966, a white bar owner refused to give a black patron a glass of water. That bar was on Hugh Avenue, and this would be the beginning of the Hugh Riots. During these riots, somebody set fire to the Sidaway Bridge. 
It's believed this was done in an attempt to prevent black school children from attending a predominantly white school. In the end, it did not stop them from attending the school. However, they would have to make an almost mile-long detour every single day in order to show up. The city would refuse to repair the bridge. Sitaway had become a literal representation of segregation. As the Kingsbury Run Valley separated a predominantly black from a predominantly white community. In 1976, Federal District Court Judge Frank Battisti would use the fact that the city did not repair the bridge as evidence of systematic racism. This was part of a court case that demanded the desegregation of Cleveland schools. Thanks to this, new integration programs were introduced to help desegregate the Cleveland schools. As of today, Sidaway still stands as the only suspension bridge in Cleveland. Inside every mind If you look, you will find There's a child who never grew old who sings The Sidaway Bridge the is a fascinating truth, place like with an important history. It's impacted the lives of many and been involved with many old. tragedies. Those lives that were impacted and those lives that were taken because of this bridge he looks will never up be the stars forgotten. And at Mars and the endless expanse of the sky Devoid of all doubt Just a question of how to climb up to the heavens and fly but time is advancing, a drip then a flood, he's adrift while you're stuck on the shore. And he sails away to the depths of our brains. And we can't seem to dream anymore. With the passing of days, we get lost in the maze that we built out of habit and fear The longer we run The more lost we become As the days disappear into years When we're sleeping in bed The child in our head is reminding us how to break out but the moment we wake it just up and escapes and we're back to the fear and the doubt but the answers inside us it never did leave we just never believed it before well I'm done with the maze for the rest of my days I'm not wasting my dreams anymore No, I'm not wasting my dreams anymore